Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTKB Foundation Level Certifications. We are getting started with Chapter 2 where we are talking about testing throughout the software development lifecycle. And today, as a part of this discussion, we are getting into the first segment, which is the title itself, that is testing in the context of software development lifecycle. And as a part of this tutorial, we'll be getting into two different segments of it, trying to understand, number one, that how does software development lifecycle impacts testing? And at the same time, the second one, that is software development lifecycle and good testing practices. So as this topic is slightly longer, we are thinking of building it in bits and pieces so that it is easy for you to adopt them, learn them, and understand them. So to get started, the first one and most important thing is introduction to SDLC. Of course, SDLC stands for Software Development Lifecycle. Indeed, this is the entire lifecycle which establishes and builds the product in a particular life cycle. So we start with a lot of major phases, very common understanding, which talks about the life cycle of a development of a product and certainly has major phases like requirement, the design, the development, testing and the maintenance or release before that, right? So a very common understanding which talks about the overall journey of development process, talks about the requirement gathering where someone like business analyst or product owner in case of Agile is responsible to gather all the information what a team needs in order to perform the required work of implementing a product. But certainly these requirements has to be reviewed, gathered and understood in terms of processing further. So once the requirement gathering phase is done or almost like going on, probably in the case of Agile, that could be differently defined because it's a continuous process. But when it comes to waterfall or V model, the phase completes and then moves to the next one. Also, if we talk about the next phase that is designed, so once the requirements have been gathered or we have some handful information with us, we start building the design of the product, which is more of like architecture, the backend, which will be, you know, the backbone of the system. And then once the design is over, we look forward to start implementing where developers start writing the code, which will be then tested by the testing team as per the independent testing concept. A separate team called as test engineers other than developers will be responsible to test the system. And once that testing is complete, we release the product to the market. And after that, the product gets into a journey of maintenance, which is more of like update, upgrade, migration and retirement. So most of these things we'll be covering in this entire chapter. And uh, the very first topic we are going to talk about is understanding how SDLC contributes in, in influencing the test process. If you quickly go back in the very first chapter, when we talk about 1.4, the test process, we indeed have discussed about the same thing that one of the factor influencing the test process is SDLC. It totally depends on your software development lifecycle that what will be your test process the effort and the period of testing in a development model. For example, if I'm talking about waterfall model here, the waterfall model testing happens once for all after implementation. But if I'm talking about agile methodology, I do testing every single day because new or uh, the existing one has to be tested continuously because every single day a developer is checking some code into the main branch and those main branches are certainly going to get side effects maybe not necessarily always but sometimes they do get side effects and I just have to run regression tests to make sure the existing are still working fine. In that context, let's understand a little deeper that how exactly SDLC can contribute or influence the test process. So when we talk about this, we have testing, which certainly gets influenced by the SDLC and has a major contribution in order to succeed. So some of the choices of the SDLC impacts on the testing include scope and timing of the test activities, like majorly involved based on the SDLC, like how exactly these activities of test will be organized and conducted. In waterfall or traditional models, it may happen later also, that's fine, but because things may not be ready by then. And however, if we just close one phase, then we move to the next phase. That's the protocol of that SDLC model. But if I talk about Agile, all the activities begin parallelly. 
that means the designer will start designing the architect developer will start building the algorithms or writing some flowcharts and testers will start preparing or understanding their test cases uh, with respect to the requirement writing test conditions writing test cases so it's not that like people wait for something to get over but parallelly you get started so that's one of the major aspect and other one here is that level of detail of the test documentation depending on waterfall you can say that the documentations are very detailed but when you talk about agile the documentation are very brief third point choice of the test technique and test approaches certainly the time matters a lot if in case your test approach are supposed to be used whether it is applicable in a particular development model or not is very important to be discussed and similarly on the other side if i talk about the test techniques it may not be possible that you really have that good time or that requirement in detail fashion that you can make use of a technique at any point of time so in agile we do have these constraints pretty much that requirements are very high level and just because they are high level some of the black box techniques are little restricted and we make use of experience based techniques like exploratory a lot and that's just because of this factor also to add to the point number 4 here extent of test automation again in traditional automation could be limited but when we talk about agile we look forward to have maximum automation because the time crunch the time is limited and certainly i need to do as much things as possible in the given timeline to us but last not the least uh, role of uh, and responsibility of a tester certainly if i compare again the traditional and agile i would say in traditional model testers are just limited to testing and they have no other responsibilities but when it comes to agile they may have cross functional abilities at the same time responsibilities and role also certainly varies a tester may be required to participate in the release planning meeting or even in the iteration plan meetings but when it comes to traditional i it might be just limited to test lead or test manager so there are many such factors which do influence the test process based on the sdlc and that totally makes sense that why it should be taken into consideration when we talk about software development life cycle right here we are also trying to quickly convey on a high level that yes the sequential development model has a different perspective altogether so we just discussed the same thing so quickly let me read out that so in the initial phases in sequential development models which is waterfall and v model uh, typically testers participate in requirement reviews test analysis and test design the executable code is usually created in the later phases so typically dynamic testing cannot be performed early in the life cycle that means until unless the code is developed a tester doesn't have anything to execute or perform so in waterfall or traditional models that is sequential models you will have to wait a long distance in order to start testing whereas on the other hand if i talk about agile that would be very quick so that's what is in the next thing we have here in some iterative and incremental models uh it is assumed that each iteration delivers a working prototype or product increment and this implies that in each iteration both static and dynamic testing may be performed at all levels frequent deliveries of increments requires fast feedback and extensive regression testing so in this particular context we are referring to things like spiral model and prototype model which were there earlier and these models used to only generate the prototypes and give it to the customer for a confirmation and as far as the customer confirms it we would use to move to the next level right and that's where it was slightly different than that of the sequential models on the other hand if i talk about agile agile certainly has a complete look and feel so agile development assumes that change may occur throughout the project therefore lightweight product documentations and extensive test automation to make regression testing easier are favored in the agile projects also most of the manual testing tends to be done using experience based test technique and do not require extensive prior test analysis and design so this could be very very dynamic as when it is available we just go through that start writing test cases and even execute right in the same sprint so in that context we see a pretty much good difference between the different sdlc model that how testing effort practices may vary in the same line the next topic we are talking about is what are those good practices of software testing which should be followed in any development model so it is not restricted to any particular development model many people do create this assumption that the factors what we are talking about are limited 
to V model or sequential models, but if I have to talk about it in particular, these are just general good characteristics of testing which should be followed in any development model. And they are very, very straightforward and easy to understand. The very first thing here we are talking about is that good testing practices independent of chosen SDLC model should include the following. And that is for every software development activity, there is a corresponding testing activity so that all development activities are subjected to quality control. Now that's very simple that if I'm talking about gathering requirements, then testing team can parallelly join them right at the beginning and start reviewing. One way you are conducting your test analysis as one of the phases of testing, but at the same time, you are having a corresponding testing activity to that of the development activity. Now here many people start thinking that aren't we talking about the development of the code? No, this is a general word of development or general meaning development, which means developing any sort of artifact, be it about requirement, the design, the workflows, the codes or whatsoever. So when it comes to business requirement, acceptance test team is required to coordinate. When it comes to system requirement, system testing team is required to participate. And same way when it comes to architectural design, which is high level design, the integration team is required to participate here. And same way for detailed design, that is low level design and code, we do unit testing. So correspondingly, the testing team aligns their activity to that of the development activities on the left. Right. Similarly, if I talk about the next one, that is different test levels have specific and different test objectives, which allows for testing to be appropriately comprehensive while avoiding redundancy. So it's very, very important also to say that one of the good practice is to keep two different levels unique. That means if I just walk into your floor and IL and just ask you that, hey, is that what you are doing right now called as testing? or something in particular, then you can go ahead and tell me that, hey, Neil, this is called as integration testing, or this is called as system testing, this is called as performance testing. So every single level what you conduct must have an objective specific to that level and should not be just like, I'm doing testing, which doesn't make any sense. You must be able to classify your activities under each level, and each level must have a unique objective rather than being collaboratively written in a way that you are just making a statement that we are doing testing and which doesn't make any sense. So make sure that whatever you conduct is well classified into a particular level and that level must have a unique objective and must not match with any other levels what you're doing. So that's where unit integration system, acceptance, performance, security, portability, interoperability, all these levels have a unique objective and unique goal. Let's look at the third point here quickly. The third point is talking about test analysis and design for a given test level begins during the corresponding development phase of the SDLC so that testing can adhere to the principles of early testing. I think this particular thing is just now explained you in the point number one that when you say there must be a corresponding testing activity, the what is that activity I can get started with. So first is of course the test analysis which you can begin parallelly with that of the respective development activity. And uh, the second one would be the preparation of the test cases. So certainly you can start preparing your test cases at the same time and then look forward to uh, execute them when the level comes into picture. Last but not the least, the point number four, it says that testers are involved in reviewing work products as soon as drafts of this documentation are available so that this early testing and defect detection can support the shift left strategy. Now, we'll be talking about what is shift left strategy in a moment, like next tutorials. But before that, how exactly I can get involved? The question is, how early should I be involved in the life cycle? The answer is, as soon as the first draft of the document is available. Let that document be anything. Could be a requirement, could be a design, could be an algorithm. But as the first draft is prepared, a tester is requested to participate in order to start reviewing them and raise any concerns, any doubts, clarifications, omissions, contradictions related to that. And that's what we refer to as static testing, which certainly could be very, very you know, important and very effective at this point of time. So put together, these are some good characteristics, good practices of testing, which should be applied to any development model, irrespective of what it is, right? So. That's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well.
Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning. Thank you.